Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to US Living, four things that I thought would be a bigger deal by Lost in the Pond. This is going to be a great video. Lost in the Pond is probably one of my favorite uh, channels on YouTube. He does these cool sort of America versus UK type comparisons. And he spent a bulk, a bulk of his life living in the UK. And then he, he's now lived in America for like 15 or so years. I can't imagine what he thought would be a bigger deal. I'm trying to think here. Because everything that I think about in America is pretty much a big deal, but that's because I've never lived there. Like if I lived in the US and I'm, I'm exposed to the, the whole culture, there are going to be, you know, certain things that I thought would be a much bigger deal. So yeah, this video is going to be cool. It's always fun to do these sort of little uh, comparisons, kind of peek into Lawrence's brain a little bit. So yeah, let's do it. I thought this was going to be a big deal, right? You know the joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, he didn't because he was too much of a chicken. <laughs> Not bad. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost. Oh, Lawrence, is that a Manchester United uniform? No, no. In the pond. And one of those memos pertains to things I thought were going to be a big deal before I moved to America, but turned out not to be. Turns out that brevity wasn't one of those things. But before moving to the United States, or indeed any country, you sort of paint a picture right here, not literally, mm. that'd be really messy, of what that country is like. Whether you've seen something in the movies or read rumours in the newspapers or fell for the lies of somebody called Chad on AOL Instant Messenger in 1998. AOL, I remember that AOL. That picture that you painted up here goes from being a Bob Ross to a Grant Wood. I have no idea what that means. But how can we believe the stories that we hear about the United States of America? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to move there. I did that in 2008, and while I was excited to move wow, to America, there were certain things that I was worried about that in hindsight made me look really stupid. And so if you're British or from another country entirely, and you're thinking of moving to the United States once it's safe to do so, then this video is for you and also for Americans that want to laugh at me. And so without further ado, here are four things that I figured would be a much bigger deal once I moved to America. Tornadoes. Tornadoes, yes. You mm. might be thinking, what's this doing on your I guess if you don't live in Tornado Alley, then you're probably not going to be exposed to a, a really serious tornado. So I, can, I guess I, I get what he means. This Lawrence. I mean, you yourself have talked before about how prevalent tornadoes are in the United States. And it's true, no country on Earth gets more F5 tornadoes than the United States. Indeed, mm. I remember it being a relatively frequent they're located occurrence back in home that on BBC area. News, you'd often see footage of big tornado outbreaks in the United States and the devastation it left before it to people's homes and livelihoods. This coupled with films like Twister and that really strong documentary in which a huge tornado results in the death of a witch, I'd built up this image of a tornado free-for-all. When it became clear to me that I was going to be living in the United States for a while and particularly here in the Midwest, I just assumed that I'd see a tornado something like every three years, you know, more than I see my own family. This is sounding really apocalyptic. And do you know how many tornadoes I've seen? Zero, and I've been here 13 what? years. I've just realized that's an unlucky number, meaning that 2021 will be the year. Now, it's a simple <laughs> fact that you will see more tornadoes if you move to the Great Plains. Right. There are people watching this who have encountered several tornadoes in their lifetime. But if people, like anybody who's watching this that lives in Tornado Alley, like how, how many tornadoes have you seen? Like how often on average would you say there's a tornado? It can be any size, you know, how many have you seen? For whatever crazy reason, tornadoes just aren't your thing, then some places are better to live than others. Now, while I haven't personally witnessed a tornado firsthand, I've twice had to take shelter amid a tornado warning, once in Indiana and once in this very building. And in many ways, that's just as terrifying because it's the fear of the unknown, right? Think of Jaws, except instead of a shark that you can't see, it's a tornado. And instead of the resourceful Chief Brody, you are a British man in the fetal position. <laughs> Apart from that, my fear of being swept up and finding myself in a field a mile away with some equally disoriented cows hasn't yet come to fruition. But while I'm on the subject of fields, that brings us on to this. To be honest, it's weird. Like, I... I know tornadoes can be super destructive, you know, very destructive, but there is something about them that like, just the actual tornado itself, looking at it, it's kind of mesmerizing, if you know what I mean. 
Growing up in Britain, I was and am a big fan of football, or what the Americans would call soccer. And soccer. back in the day, I could have played for Manchester United in England if it wasn't for, you know, reality. <laughs> I never cared about the football versus soccer. The amount of friends I've got that are like, yeah, I almost went pro, mate, but I had a knee injury. That old chestnut. <laughs> debate. I did have genuine concerns that America just, it doesn't care about this sport I call football. And that's fine, you've got your own sports, I understand that, even if I can't say the same about the rules. But my biggest fear with that is that I wouldn't be able to find anywhere to have a kick about, that goalposts wouldn't exist. You know, that I'd have to make one out of anything or any one that I could find. My wife wasn't up to it. And it turns out she didn't need to be, because the United States actually has soccer fields wherever uh -huh. you look. That's an exaggeration, you won't find them in libraries. And my initial fears that I would never play soccer again weren't realised. I mean, they were, but only because I ate too much pizza. Yeah, from what I've seen, football is like massively on the rise in America. I still think, I said this about a year ago, I think within the next 10 years that the MLS will be at the same level at least as like the Scottish Premier League. At least. It probably will surpass the SBL in quality. I think it's growing rapidly. And why is this? Well, there's a big interest in soccer at the collegiate level, an interest that seems to largely diminish by the time people are done with education, kind of like marching band. And now from first world problems that never materialised to those of the natural world. Deadly spot. In Britain, when it comes to nature, nothing is really that extreme. Yeah. There are no F5 tornadoes, there are no earthquakes over eight on the Richter scale, no. and the country isn't known for terrifying creatures, except for Noel Edmonds. And so because <laughs> of this, it was always at the back of my mind that if I were to visit somewhere like Australia or the United States, I'd better watch out for spiders that spiders have a little bit of red on them, not to be a hypocrite. And, and just like everybody else that was nine years old in 1990, I was obsessed with the film Arachnophobia. In this film, a huge number of deadly spiders take over this American I've never town, seen it. And it's up to Jeff Daniels from Dumb and Dumber to save the day. And here's the thing, even after watching that film, I'm not arachnophobic, I like spiders. But given the choice, I'd prefer to remain socially distanced from, you know, a black widow, a brown recluse, or that stupid thing at the end of Stephen King's It. But when I moved to the United States, I genuinely found myself accepting that this was about to become my reality. That every summer I'd have to do my utmost to avoid the shed. I had visions of going into my drawer and not knowing that a sneaky black widow was concealing itself in my underpants. A black widow can kill you, right? Is, is it got a poisonous bite? I imagine with a name like Black Widow, of course it is. But thankfully, this isn't quite how it turned out because again, after 13 years of living here, I've not encountered a Black Widow, a brown recluse, or a hobo, and that's not me being derogatory, <laughs> that is a genuine spider. <laughs> Now, as with tornadoes, there is are really? Americans watching this thinking, There's a spider oh, Lawrence, a you should come to my neck of the woods if you want to see a deadly spider. I don't! But it is true that brown recluses, for example, are more common in the South. So if you live there, let me know in the comments below if you've ever encountered one and whether or not your trousers became equally brown. <laughs> and so we've had violent weather, dangerous if misunderstood arachnids. What can possibly top that, you're thinking? And it probably doesn't come anywhere near close to what you're thinking. Jaywalk. A jaywalking. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> because apparently, is it illegal to jaywalk if you cross the road and it's not at the designated spot? You can get arrested or fined. Is that is that is that true? It says so much about the small role that it's played in my life here that I've discussed it so little on my channel. But let's go back in time to when I was a wee little boy of 25. Back then, I'd visited the United States a couple of times, but I had absolutely no idea what jaywalking was. You know, it was a word that cropped up occasionally in films, but I just assumed mm. it was a sport. And then in 2007, one year before I moved to the United States, I remember there was this news story coming out of America of a British historian who was wrestled to the ground by several police officers what? who had warned him against jaywalking. And it was at this moment that I realised that jaywalking meant to cross the road at a non-designated area. And mm. the news back home was making this huge thing out of it. You know, if you <laughs> Wow, there's an article on the BBC, what every Brit should know of. <laughs> That's so funny.
You go oh to the United God. States, don't jaywalk. They've wrestled you'll never him to the ground. Back. And it all seemed really extreme because back in Britain, we don't have the concept of jaywalking. No. So long as you look both ways to make sure there's no traffic coming, you can cross a road regardless of whether or not there's a zebra crossing or a crosswalk. I thought this was going to be a big deal, right? You know the joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, he didn't because he was too much of a chicken. <laughs> at least that was the case at first. And after my wife had laughed at me 17 times, I started to get the impression that I might be overthinking this. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not an active jaywalker. As everyone should, I follow the rules of the road. Me Those too. rules do vary by state, so <laughs> next time you're feeling paranoid, Google is your friend. But in all of the years that I've lived here, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, ooh, did you see Ashley? I think she was jaywalking, better call the cops. It's low on the list of offences is what I'm saying, and it's definitely not a sport. Oh, cool. That's it for cops. this episode. Let me know in the comments below how stupid I was. Another fun video from Lawrence and Lost in the Pond. The jaywalking one is something that I should have thought of because I also thought that it was a massive offense to jaywalk in America. Like, I'm, from what I gather, it's something that's kind of frowned upon, but you're not gonna get arrested for jaywalking, are you? Or is it like something that you just don't do? Is it something that's sort of been like ingrained into you that you just don't do it? I suppose most people, they're driving anyway. Like, you know, I don't think, mm, <laughs> It's not like here, like where a lot of people walk and take public transport. I guess because most people drive in America, the, the, the situations where someone would need to jaywalk are probably far fewer. So maybe it's just not a common thing. But yeah, super interesting video. Once again, I love Lost in the Pond. Great channel. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.